Hello, welcome back to the shed in the garden at the house that sat down. Um, today I've got the second of my two fun tutorials building on our sketching and painting techniques. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at some meadow flowers again. I thought it would be a good idea to start by uh, actually sketching out the sorts of shapes that we might be using uh, in our finished piece. So uh, here we are obviously with pencil and paper and looking at the sorts of uh, shapes that would be used to draw um, a daisy. Now we have done daisies before, uh, but we didn't really look in complete detail. Uh, now we're fairly close up with the daisy and we're starting with a side petal. Obviously there is a, a, there is a degree of perspective that we need to be thinking about with regard to the daisy because we, can, we could just do a, a round blob in the middle and um, petals sticking out on, on all sides as if we were looking directly at the daisy, but I'd quite like us to look at it from the side, um, which means that obviously the petals on the side closest to us need to be coming towards us. And they wouldn't necessarily show their entire shape. So we're looking at these sort of uh, little rounded triangles here as the petal comes off the central part of the daisy and moves towards us. So we tend to see a lot of the point, but not of the length of the petal. Uh, but then obviously the ones at the side, you can see they would poke a little bit further around and down and you would see more of a curl to them at the side. Now once I'm happy with the initial shapes as the flower is building up, you can see I'm darkening them so that they stand out a little bit more. Um, and then we've obviously got the bulb of the daisy, the bulb of the central part of the daisy. Uh, and then the edges of the petals that would go away from the daisy into the background. So you just see a little suggestion of them. Okay, darkening that up. Now we need to think about how does the daisy join the ground. So there's a, a little central section. If you look at the back of a daisy, there's a, a, a little sort of, um, again, a sort of triangular shape where everything comes together and then it all narrows down to the stem. And then as it joins with the top of the stem, there will be little, tiny little bits of leaf, tiny little bits of greenery, almost like little tiny leaves, uh, as it joins the stem. Um, okay, so going back to put more shadow in, now that I'm very confident that this is a shape that I'm liking. Um, and obviously the light will be hitting the top of the daisy, and then the shadows will be in the undersides of everything. Now, going down the stem, again, the light will be on one side of the stem and not the other. And a couple of leaves going on. Daisy leaves tend to be a little bit more rounded than others, but from the side, they would appear to have a slight point to them. A little bit more shading going on to give it a bit more depth there. And there we have a daisy, just a very simple shape, which we will then translate into paint. Now, other plants that we may see in our little daisy field is in fact another simple spring flower, uh, the buttercup. Very different shaped leaves to buttercups. Uh, they're more sort of spade shaped. Um, and if you look at them, buttercups tend to have about five petals. So I'm starting, again, we're looking from the side at this buttercup, so we won't see the central part of the buttercup. Just the lovely big, almost square spade shaped petals, which again come to a point at the bottom. So we can see uh, a large one more centrally and then part of two on the sides. And again, there will be more of the greenery that holds the petal together, uh, more of the greenery that holds the petals together to form the flower. Again, with the sort of spikier bits as they join the stem, down the stem there. Now I'm making the areas I like a bit darker. You can see the faint outline of two more leaves in the background, but we don't see an awful lot of them. They're just a suggestion. Again, shed shadows going on. And then down, down the stem. Similarly, a couple of leaves going on there. And again, they do seem to be quite fat leaves. It's quite nice to pop out into the garden and have a little look if you've got access. But if you haven't, you can just make it up as you go along. After all, this is your painting. They're your flowers. They don't have to be terribly realistic. They just have to be colourful and fun. Over here in a spare corner of the paper, I'm now going to look at a buttercup again from a different angle. 
Uh, looking more on the top so that you can you can see uh, all five of the leaves more clearly. Now I'm going to start in the centre. If you do get the chance to look at a buttercup, you'll see that there's a, a very distinct uh, centre, which tends to be more green and yellow. Uh, and then around that, you will get your five leaves splaying out. Now again, the, the leaves do tend to be more spade shaped, but in order to get that sideways angle on them, they don't necessarily appear to be quite so squared off uh, in this way. So you can see me putting some rather interesting shapes around. Uh, now that bottom one is almost triangular as it comes towards you in the picture. So you see the, the top section of the spade shape as the bottom of the triangle, but it narrows to a point where that central part of the flower joins them all together. And then each one uh, obviously is a little bit more relaxed in a shape. This is quite a well-developed buttercup that's very well open to the sunshine. Bit of shadowing going on there where I'm happy with the shapes. And then just a suggestion of the part where all the petals join the stem. Little stem there and a little leaf. Again, we're looking at um, a rough approximation of a buttercup. It doesn't have to have lots and lots of fine detail. It's not a specific botanical drawing. Uh, and in fact, you don't even have to stick to the lovely uh, buttery yellow colours. You could have buttercups of any colour. Uh, because this is your world, you can do what you like with it. OK, so now we're moving on to the painting side of things. I've got a large stretch canvas. Now, I'm not painting it in the usual way. I'm mixing green with PVA, which is that um, very useful glue that often we use for uh, children's projects at preschools. Uh, and, and junior schools uh, because it dries nice and clear. Now it's a bit of an experiment this but I'm mixing it with the green acrylic and um, putting a nice light layer of that all over the canvas so it's almost like a translucent green. Now the other thing I've done is I've hopped over the uh, fence into the field next door and I've got some grasses. Now the second layer that goes on is in fact neat PVA with these grasses stuck into them. Now you absolutely don't have to do this. You could just paint on stalks. Uh, but I thought it would be quite nice to do this really textured canvas. So you can see that now, now that the PVA has, has dried, uh, it's quite a nice canvas with a, a nice bright green at the background and then these grasses stuck to it. Now over the top of that, I'm putting another mix of green paint, which is a, a more sap green colour uh, mixed with PVA, half and half uh, is pretty much uh, the mixture that you want. Um, and then I'm putting quite a patchy green layer over that so that when it dries, some of it will be this new green colour and some of it will still have the glow from the light green that's underneath. Uh, and I'm going all over, um, changing the mix as I go, sometimes a bit more PVA, sometimes a bit more paint. And then you end up with this rather nice um, green texture which gives you quite a lot of depth and suggests lots of layers of grasses behind the grasses that are stuck onto the canvas. Now, using some of the shapes that we um, identified in our early sketch, I'm now marking out daisies and buttercups using simple bright cadmium yellow and white. Um, they're quite nice, they're quite fun, a little bit relaxed shapes going on there with the central yellow for the daisies and obviously those lovely spade shapes for the buttercups. Now this is only the first layer that's going on um, because against the green uh, the, the whites and the yellows aren't standing out quite the way I'd like them to. I'm also popping in little suggestions of the greens where they join their stems and little indications of stems running down to join the grasses. Now once that's completely dry I'm going over it again uh, with the same colours to pick out areas where the colours are really more intense just to make them stand out that little bit extra. Um, not forgetting to pop the highlights in uh, because obviously the petals will touch the, will catch the sun in different ways. But then if you see that close up there it actually does work rather nicely and it's a very different take on a bright meadow scene. Uh, and there's another one there, an example 
just to show how you can do it. If you if you don't have access to a field like me, or you don't have access to the garden, and you'd still like to paint this sort of picture, there's one with a flat canvas uh, without the glue treatment underneath. And I still think it works quite nicely. And uh, there we have it, a mixed media canvas with a difference. Uh, I hope you've really enjoyed it. I certainly have. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you next time. And please, if you like your finished piece of work, do post it on social media and tag me in. Until next time, stay safe.